and welcome to our channel. I am Stacy, and this is Peppy the Cockatiel and we're here to talk about something very important that I just feel like there isn't enough information out there for bird owners and unfortunately it is called avian gastric yeast. Now this all started out back in July when Archie had to go to the hospital. I took him to the emergency vet and they wanted to keep him for observation. Because he wasn't breathing quite right, they wanted to keep him in the oxygen tank to make sure that he was getting enough oxygen. Um, I went back to visit him the next day and the vet, uh, her name was Dr. Wong, she had done a lot of different tests on him and ended up doing like kind of like a fecal swab where they take um, one of their poops and put it under a scope and um, just kind of like check it out I guess and see like what all is in there if there's anything that shouldn't be and she told me that he had a very high level of macrobdis which is another way of saying avian gastric yeast it's basically a certain yeast that can come up in their droppings if they have it it doesn't always show up in their droppings because um, it shed intermittently, but he had it pretty bad, so she said there was a lot of it in his poop. So she told me the medication that we needed to order for him. I ordered it on Friday, and unfortunately, the, the pharmacy was basically already closed. They weren't going to fulfill the order, and of course, there was the weekend in the way because pharmacies aren't open on Saturdays or Sundays. So they didn't start on his order until Monday. I paid for like the fastest shipping that I could and it was delivered on Thursday, but it was delivered Thursday, like the late afternoon. So I was able to get it to the vet, to the hospital him on Friday. So he was hospitalized for a week. I went and visited him several of the days. I called off work, used personal days or sick days so I could drive to see him. He was at the uh, U of I uh, Zoology Medicine Hospital in uh, Champaign-Urbana, so they took really good care of him there. They would call me twice a day with updates on how he was doing, and um, so whenever I would go to visit him, he would just be very quiet. He definitely wasn't himself, but he still like cuddled and wanted to be held. I took schoolwork with me, but any day I went to visit, I never worked on schoolwork. I took it with me as if I was going to, but it just never happened because while I was there, I just wanted to put all my focus on on Archie. So I would go to the vet, and usually I would get there around noon or so, and then I would still, and then I would stay until they would basically have to kick me out because they were closing at like five o'clock. So I was there for a good five hours or so. Some days I got there a little bit earlier, some days later if I had like an appointment in the morning. It got a little frustrating sometimes because they would call me and say like, oh, he's doing better, he has more energy today. Um, and then I would go and visit him the next day and he still wasn't acting himself at all. So I told them, I said, he may seem like he has energy to you, but he is not acting anything like himself. So he's normally all over the place, playing with all of his toys, whistling, talking, singing. So, you know, he may seem okay to you, but to me, he's definitely still acting very sick. They wanted me to have OB tested for macrobdis or avian gastric yeast just to see if maybe OB had been the one to give it to him since I brought OB home like a week prior to this. Um, OB ended up testing negative, so he, he didn't have it. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't how Archie got it. We're not sure how Archie got the avian gastric yeast. Um, there's a chance that uh, Brett and Peppy brought it with them when I brought them home and that he got it from them, even though I quarantined them for 30 days. So there's a, there's a slight chance that it was from them, but I don't wanna like point fingers or, or blame anybody for anything. So um, I'm just sticking with that, you know, I don't know exactly how he got it. They started giving him the medication the day that I brought it, which was uh, Friday. So even though I had ordered it on a Friday, I didn't have it to the hospital until like a week later. That's how long it took to get the medicine mixed up and sent to us. I wish they could have done it quicker. <laughs> Thanks guys. So, step up. Okay, that's 
<laughs> well, thanks for trying to cheer me up. So, um, we were hoping that he would be doing better on Saturday. So, she called me first thing Saturday and said he still wasn't doing very good. She had hoped that the medicine would be doing more for him by then, um, but that he wasn't doing very well. Later that night, she called me to give me an update. And she told me that he was doing much worse. And she was really worried about him and she didn't think he was going to make it. Um, that afternoon, she had tested like his white blood cell count and his red blood cells and all of that stuff and she said that he was bleeding internally and he was doing very badly and that he likely wasn't wasn't gonna make it through the night so even though it was a Saturday she offered for me to come and visit with him just in case he didn't make it so I could say my goodbyes. So, um, keep in mind the hospital is about an hour and a half from my house. So, I was driving three hours round trip every day for basically a week to go visit him. So, I drove an hour and a half to the hospital. Um, I drove an hour and a half to the hospital and he didn't make it. <laughs> and um, they asked uh, like what, what I wanted to do with him and I had him cremated and they made this beautiful little footprint for me and got some of his feathers and stuff and the uh, vet student who basically was like in charge of his case aside from the actual doctor um, she was super sweet like the whole time she was so nice and she told me that she had never seen anyone quite so dedicated and that it was very clear that I loved him and um, they just, they were really nice. They took good care of us. I know that, I know they did the best that they could for him. But he just didn't make it. I'm sorry, I, I need to make this video and I knew it was gonna be emotional, so I apologize. And I am, Definitely not being fake. I hope nobody thinks that I'm being fake. Um, so my mom called a hotel in the area because she didn't want me driving home. So I stayed overnight in a hotel before I drove home the next day. Um, I didn't go to work because there was just no way I was going to be able to work. So it's been really hard since he passed away. And basically, these are my first videos that I'm making since he passed away. I had to take a break. Um, it's hard to make a video without him because he was in basically every inter introduction of almost every video that I made. So, what are you guys doing? What are you doing over there? So, um... The vet really wanted me to get Brett and Peppy checked out to see if they had avian gastric yeast. We had confirmed that Obi here definitely did not have it, but we wanted to test Brett and Peppy to see if they had it. So um, I waited a few weeks um, before I, I ended up having it done and then it takes a, a week to get the results back. So, but um, I just had Peppy tested because it cost $200 per test, so it adds up really quickly having them tested. Um, Archie's hospital bill was really high. Um, I did a GoFundMe, and I want to thank everyone again who 
contributed to that. I appreciate it. What are you guys all looking at? I'm very lucky to have such sweet cockatiels. Um, so I had just Peppy tested because he lives in the same cage as Brett. So if Peppy was going to test positive, Brett was definitely going to test positive. And if Peppy tested negative, I would still get Brett tested. Um, just to be absolutely certain that neither of them had it. Um, but it's a good assumption that if one of them had it, then the other one would definitely have it since they lived in the same cage. Um, so Peppy's test came back about a week later and it came back positive, which was like earth shattering to me. Um, but when the vet called me, she had called the University of Illinois, um, like zoology vet that we had gone to when Archie was in the hospital and they came up with a really good treatment plan. Um, I always, I had read that avian gastric yeast could not be like... Like you couldn't get rid of it. Like once they had it, they had it for life is what I what I had read. Um, apparently that's not necessarily true. It's difficult to get rid of when you have an entire like large flock of birds. Like I'm not talking like my flock, which you know is uh, like five birds or whatever. But it's for really large flocks. It's basically impossible to get rid of. So the two vets kind of came up with a plan. They wanted to medicate the entire flock. So not just the cockatiels, but my kaik and my African gray as well. Um, just because it is contagious, we wanted to make sure that the entire flock did not have it. But we also did not want to pay an extra $200 per test for the other birds. So we were just going to treat it as if they all had it. So I ordered the medication. The medication was pretty expensive when you have this many birds. Um, we did separate syringes for each bird just because we didn't want cross-contamination. They each had their own bottle of medication. They each got a different dose of medicine. And I'll put the name of the medication that I gave them uh, up here. So it was like $500 for all of them. And I had to give that to them twice a day for four weeks. It was horrible. Um, my kayak actually liked the medication. So essentially for my kayak, all I had to do was stick the syringe between the bars and she would come over and very happily just take it from the syringe. Uh, all the other birds were more difficult to give it to. By about the fourth week, my African Grey would let me pick her up and hold her like a little baby and give it to her. So she did better by the fourth week, but obviously the first three weeks she did not do well. The cockatiels did not do well the entire time. They hated it. I had to put them in a little towel and hold them like a burrito. Um, the way that you give them medication, if you're familiar with how to hand feed a bird um, and you're an expert at it, you could definitely do it that way. I do not feel comfortable with it because if you give them medication through a syringe or anything through a syringe and you essentially put it down the wrong hole because they're like breathing tube and they're opening for where their food goes uh, is very like close to each other. You could very easily drown them when you try to give them medication if you just try to do it in one like one quick uh, shot into the mouth. So what my vet had me do is I dribbled it in their mouths a little bit at a time. It was helpful when they wanted to attack the syringe because they would be biting the syringe so their mouth was already kind of open so it was easy to do. But as time went on, they didn't do that very much and they just did not want to open their beak. So I held them in the burrito and I had to use one hand to like hold their beak open and then the other hand with the syringe. So it was definitely very difficult. So I would recommend if you have a young bird or even if you have an older bird to try to train them to syringe, um, to take a syringe uh, just in case you ever have to medicate your bird. I would definitely recommend doing that my birds don't have that. It was very difficult the four weeks that we did the process. Um, the other thing the vets wanted me to do aside from give them their medication twice a day for four weeks was at least once a week they wanted me to uh, take the cage, take everything out of the cage and wipe it down, uh, everything, purchase everything, 
um, not the toys, but like the cage itself, um, the grate, the door, the perches, etc. Um, with either a bleach mixture of like part bleach, part water, or with 70% isopropyl alcohol, or basically it's like rubbing alcohol, uh, which some people told me on Facebook, they were like, don't do that, you shouldn't do that, that don't use that to clean your bird's cage, that's not good for them, etc, etc. But if, if my avian veterinarian and my zo zoologist hospital vet told me that I could use that, then I'm going to take their word for it, not, not the word of someone on Facebook on like one of those cockatiel groups. I'm not going to take advice from them, I'm going to listen to my vet. So I just kind of disregarded when they said that to me on there. So I use the, the isopropyl alcohol. I hate bleach. Like bleach is just scary to me. I don't want to accidentally bleach my clothes or any fabrics or anything like that. So I just prefer the alcohol route. So what we did was we, um, my dad would come over, we would take the birds, put them all in carriers, and then we would take um, all of the toys out of each cage and then roll the cage outside. We had to carry it to the driveway and we would wash it down. I would take my like uh, poop dissolver spray and a scrubber and scrub the poop off. The vet said you have to get every particle of poop off of the perches, the cage bars, everything. She said if you don't get the poop particles off and you clean everything else and put them back in the cage, it's still contaminated. They're not gonna get rid of it. You have to clean every particle off of it. So it was like super important to get it like basically spotless. Um, so after we would power wash it and I would scrub it down, we would take the alcohol with paper towels and just pour a ton of alcohol onto the paper towel and then just use the paper towel to like wipe everything down, the perches, um, cage bars, the grate, everything. Um, then we would let it sit for 10 minutes and then we would take the hose and make sure we sprayed everything off really good because you don't want to leave any of that behind and have them like like chew on the cage bars or be climbing around on the bars and get you know a little bit of alcohol in your mouth. You obviously wouldn't want that so you have to make sure you rinse it really well. So she wanted us to do that once a week for the full treatment period so we did that. So that would take like we would pick a day that my dad could come over and that I was like off at a decent time for him to come over and help me with it. And it would take a few hours out of our night each time they would come over. So my parents were really awesome about helping me, um, helping me clean the cages and my mom would like make dinner and stuff and bring it over for us to eat while we clean the cages. So my family was really supportive during this whole time. So after the treatment period was over, what the vet wanted to do was do three negative tests, but we were gonna do a collective sample. She said, because we want the entire flock to not have it, we might as, just do one, we might as well just do one sample with several poops from each bird in one test tube, um, because that's how basically they test for it. I forgot to say this earlier, but when they test it, they put the poop under the scope and see if they can see the yeast in there. But since it's intermittently shed and it doesn't always show up on their poop, um, you basically have to get like several droppings and put them in a test tube. And then the vet, I'd take them to the vet and they would ship it off to some place in like a lab in California where they would use a PCR, I think is what it was called. And they would look for the Macarabda specifically to see if it was there. Um, because it's like a lot more sensitive than just looking at it through a scope, I guess. So that's what, that's why it's so expensive is because it has to go to California, get tested through like the PCR. So the vet wanted to have three negatives of those from all of the birds through a collective test to save me money. Um, before we know that it's definitely like gone and we're spacing it out four weeks apart. So we just got our second negative test last week, so it's definitely looking good. We still want one more negative test, but the vet is very optimistic as far as us being good to go with it. Yes. Yeah. Now, Brett and Peppy did not show any signs of having avian gastric yeast, so I honestly when they told me to have them tested 
um, after Archie passed away. The reason I didn't do it right away is because they didn't show any signs. So I wasn't really worried about it. I was like, oh, you know, they don't show signs. They probably don't have it, but I'll still get them tested. So I got them tested and it turned out they had it. So, um, what are you doing? So I was very surprised when their test came back positive or when Peppy's test came back positive, which means Brett would be positive for it too. Oh my gosh. Um, so avian gastric yeast is contagious. It's generally passed through droppings. So whether um, there's a dropping on a perch on a play stand and one of them happens to like walk through it or they share a food bowl or a water bowl, it's likely to get passed from bird to bird. If you do have a bird with avian gastric yeast, it's extremely important that I wouldn't even keep them in the same room as a healthy bird. What? Everybody's spreading their, you can't see Brett, he's over here spreading his wings like Peppy is. So, but it's very important to make sure that there's no cross contamination between birds. Um, a lot of the perches I just threw away and got new ones, especially like the edible calcium perches. I just threw those away because those were going to be too difficult to like completely sanitize. Like I didn't want to clean those with alcohol and give it back to them. Even if I rinsed them off, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And like the play stands, I had to take those out and wash those down and use the alcohol on them to make sure that they were fully sanitized as well. I see a lot of people say to use vinegar as a disinfectant for your cages and I kind of used to be one of those people too that that was how like I cleaned my bird cages was I used a vinegar mixture to like disinfect the cages but when you have something like avian gastric yeast like it's an illness like a yeast like a almost like a disease so like vinegar isn't going to take care of something like that. You need to have something that's going to kill any bacteria, any germs, anything that could possibly make your bird sick. Now that we're done with the treatment, I did pick up some F10 veterinary disinfectant, so I don't have to use anything as, as harsh as alcohol all the time to disinfect the cages when I clean them, but I'm definitely gonna use F10 veterinary disinfectant. I'll put a picture of that up here. You can get it on Amazon. You just get like an empty bottle and you dilute it with water. I use that to disinfect their cages. I don't use vinegar anymore. Um, F10 is, it's pretty well safe for birds. Like I wouldn't let my birds drink it or chew on it uh, or like spray the bars of it and just let them like actively climb on the bars and get it in their mouth. I would definitely wipe the bars down after I use the F10. Oh, something else that I did um, following the treatment process was I basically threw out all of the bird toys, uh, all the ones that had ever been in Archie's cage, all of the perches that had ever been in Archie's cage, but also pretty much all of the other bird toys that had been in their cages. Uh, just in case they were contaminated so I literally threw out like all of the bird toys so I've had to work on replacing those which has been a bit yeah which has gotten expensive but so that is definitely something that I would recommend if you have to deal with avian gastric yeast your bird has it I would definitely say replace all of their bird toys take out uh, anything that's been in their cages especially if it has poop on it and throw that away it's not really easy to just like disinfect a toy. Um, it's not like you can put rubbing alcohol on bird toys. I wouldn't recommend it. So I just threw them out and bought new ones. It's been expensive, but I just feel a lot more comfortable that way knowing that I'm not giving them anything that could possibly be contaminated. So it's been a really rough process. It's definitely been stressful. So uh, one of the things that's changed for me during this process is the quarantine situation. When you get a new bird, I used to think that you would just put them in a separate cage in a separate room for 30 days, take them to the vet for a physical exam, and then after the quarantine period, if they haven't shown signs of illness or obviously just like passed away in general during that 30 day period, then you can introduce them to the flock. Um, now I'm a lot, I'm going to definitely be getting any new birds tested for things like avian gastric yeast or 
uh, beak and feather disease, different things like that, that they might be asymptomatic over, uh, like Bornavirus, because Jackie has Bornavirus. Um, I'll definitely be getting them tested for that before I introduce them to the flock. That way, you know, like I said, that might be how it got introduced into my flock. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really like to think about it because I'm very happy that I got Brent and Peppy. They're very sweet birds, and I would not go back and not get them. I might do things differently and get them uh, more checked out by the vet and get tested, but I wouldn't. I would not get them like if I went back in time and changed anything. Yeah, because you're a very sweet bird. Um, I'll put a couple of pictures up here um, when, um, after Archie passed away, the vet clinic did send me like a lovely card, one of the students there, because they have uh, students that work there um, that help the vets and stuff, um, did a drawing of Archie, so they sent that picture and that was really pretty. Um, they sent me like a, like a condolence card that was nice of them. And then someone, um, my mom had posted about what was going on on one of her like Facebook groups that she's on and someone who like does a lot of drawings and things wanted to do a drawing of a picture that my mom had posted of me and Archie. So they sent that, they sent it for free, they normally charge for it, so that was really sweet. So I'll put a picture of that up here as well. Um, the student that was on Archie's case um, really wanted to decorate his little uh, footprint piece. Um, because she had gotten really attached to him during the time that he had been at the hospital and she had been working with him. And then uh, Dr. Wong there was just really, she was, she was awesome. So like I said, I know they did everything they could when they were taking care of him. I really hope that this video can help somebody else who might be going through the same thing that I went through. Um, but that way they have more information because I didn't have all this information and kind of learned as I was going through it. I'm looking forward to getting their next test done at the beginning of the year and her calling me and telling me that it's another negative test so that we can know that we're, you know, that we've gotten through this. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. Please subscribe if you're interested so that you can join our flock. We would love if you would watch more of our videos. We love the support. And if you also enjoyed this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would appreciate that as well. And we will see you next time.